Moose in Colorado, they're doing really well. We're seeing moose colonizing new areas. If we left them unchecked, the natural tendency for wildlife species was probably to go into kind of a boom and bust cycle. As an agency, we're responsible for managing the species, but relatively speaking, there's not that many compared to 260,000 elk and probably over 400,000 deer. So we don't have the luxury of having an infinite number of resources to put in in the management of the herd. So the goal of my research is to come up with some alternative ways of trying to determine where our moose herds are in terms of abundance relative to the local carrying capacity. And if we can get at that without actually knowing the exact number that can be supported or the exact number that are out there, perhaps we can manage for them without having the same financial investment. And so one of the things that we're looking at is looking at pregnancy rates and browse. So what we'll do is we'll go out and capture animals. When we do that, we get multiple pieces of data. When we fly over an animal, we'll immediately know sex ratios, if there's bulls running around, but also if a cow that we're about to capture has a calf at heel. So that tells us if she bred last year and how long she carried that calf. And we'll put a radio collar on it, and that'll give us both survival data, but then also if it's a GPS collar, it'll tell us through the upcoming year where that animal goes. We pull the blood, and so from the blood, we can get pregnancy data. So that tells us that animal is able to pull off one breeding and meet the nutritional requirements to breed again. At the same time, we also do body condition work. So we'll use ultrasound to look at both rump fat as well as the depth of the loin muscle, which is an indicator of condition of that animal. We've observed that there have been differences between geographic areas in the percentage of cows that have calves. Their body condition and nutritional intake is a real strong possible driver for that. We're looking at vegetation quality and how that has an impact on moose condition, as well as the calf at heel rates. Starting early mid-May, we'll kind of start gearing up and going out and getting observations on these animals that we put the collars on. We know at the time of capture if she was pregnant, so then we'll get that observation of did she have a calf and did she have a single or twins. Once we kind of get through each individual, then we'll follow up in late summer. If we can get another observation at the end of August, that animal survived for the summer months. We're after a herd level snapshot, what percent of the animals are breeding, what percent have twins. But then also we're really curious about individuals. If they are nutritionally stressed, when do they start skipping breeding? And if we can avoid that and keep them all breeding every year, that just builds in some resilience to disease or hard winters. We are just trying to figure out what are some of the other tools that we haven't really explored yet that'll allow us to more cost-effectively manage them and still do a good job of having healthy, productive animals out there, enough that people are seeing them, and we have some opportunity for hunters, but then also that the herds are productive and going to be around for generations to come.